on the western coast of India lies Goa, caressed by the Arabian Sea, a land of natural loveliness and serenity. Miles and miles of golden lined beaches, fringed with palm trees, interspersed with orchards and paddy fields. Slumbering villages, hills, churches, temples, quaint country craft, the balmy breeze fragrant with the aroma of fruit and flower. A mine of wealth and prosperity. The people imbued with an old world courtesy, gentle and hospitable, devout and tolerant. In old Goa stands the basilica of Bon Jesus. Here lies the incorruptible remains of Saint Francis Xavier, patron saint of the Goans, known to many as the Apostle of the Indies. Like the Christian shrines of Goa, the ancient Hindu temples display the Goans' deep spiritualism, a synthesis of the East and West. These and much more contribute to the charm of Goa, fabled in myth and history, a land where different cultures blend together in total harmony. Legend has it that Goa was claimed from the sea by Lord Parashuram. He is believed to have shot an arrow from the top of the Sahyadri Ghats into the sea, which then receded, giving rise to the Konkan region. Goa flourished under the Maurya and Chalukya dynasties. It reached its golden period under the Kadambas. Jaykeshi, a ruler from the Kadamba dynasty, writes, that the streets of the capital were filled with the palanquins of his pundits. The poles of the palanquins were covered with jewels and inside were quivering the golden earrings of their owners. Days of glory. Indeed, Goa is surrounded by legend and laden with history. The impact of religion stays forever. These remains of ancient temples lie tucked away deep in the lovely dark woods of Goa. Remnants of the earliest Hindu dynasties, evoking a past that goes back into centuries. Brahma, the creator, the source of all life. Creation, then preservation. Vishnu is the preserver in the Hindu trinity. These ancient images and shrines in Goa date back to the medieval period. Along with Brahma and Vishnu in the Hindu trinity is Shiv, the destroyer. And Shiv, the lord of the yogas and shastras, is worshipped in the form of Linga.
One hears the hymns of the Vedas and the Upanishads, propounding the philosophy of peace and enlightenment. The greatest charm of Goa lies perhaps in its smallness, just 3,701 square kilometers, a population of 850,000, and yet a history as old as the epic Mahabharata. For the epic contains a reference to Gomantak, the original name of Goa. Other ancient scriptures, such as the Brighu Samhita and the Markandeya Purana, also refer to it. The grand conception of the Hindu pantheon lends its richness to ancient art and architecture in the temples of Goa. The walls and pillars and the roof of the shrine carry exquisite carvings all based on the fundamentals laid down in the Shilpa Shastra. Splendid monuments, sculpture and carvings that speak of an age-old heritage of craftsmanship. Goa was well known to the Phoenician traders centuries ago and renowned for its fabulous wealth. Remnants of the Muslim kingdom established in the Deccan before the arrival of the Europeans. The Franciscan friars brought the message of Christianity to Goa to the court of Adil Shahi of the Bijapur dynasty. The Portuguese first came to Goa in the early 16th century. Alfonso the Albuquerque came ashore in 1510. Western culture seeped in slowly. Roman Catholicism spread far and wide in Goa. Shrines and churches sprang up all over. The convent of St. Francis of Assisi, a splendid example of Manuelina architecture in Goa. Dedicated to the Holy Ghost, this church, constructed in 1530, is richly ornamented. The paintings depict the main episodes in the life of the saint. Religious thought apart, the impact of Portuguese culture was felt strongly in Goa's lifestyle. The houses display an architectural style that blends both east and west. Rashol Seminary, one of the oldest in Goa, houses many treasured paintings and sculptures depicting the life of Christ.
30 years after Albuquerque came the most famous figure in Goan history, seeking not spices, but souls. Saint Francis Xavier, bringing with him just a breviary and a crucifix. He came as apostolic nuncio to the east, sent by the king of Portugal. He preached the gospel of Christ and endeared himself to the people. Ten years later, Francis died in China, but his body was returned to Goa, where it now reposes in a magnificent casket in Bon Jesus Basilica. At the time of the exposition, his mortal remains draw pilgrims in their thousands from far and wide. As the seat of the Portuguese Empire in the East, Goa reached its present dimensions in the 17th century. The ruins of Goa complete the missing links in Goa's history. But the main monuments are still intact. The convent and church of St. Augustine, rebuilt between 1597 and 1606, dedicated to Our Lady of Grace. And old Goa is still there, old as time, old as history. Portuguese records say that old Goa, the capital, was even grander than Lisbon. Goa is full of palatial houses, charming examples of Latin colonial architecture. Sachivalaya, the seat of the government, is situated on the bank of the river Mandovi. The grand Rajnivas at Cabo. Hotels, guest houses, tourist bureau, all these help visitors to Goa plan their itineraries. Goa is indeed a tourist paradise. The hotel industry in Goa has kept pace with the rest of the world. The service and facilities compare with the finest in the world. There are tourist bungalows to suit individual budgets. Pleasure spots galore. Everyone goes to Goa for the great escape.
Donna Paola, a few kilometers away from Panaji. A picturesque spot facing the Marmagoa Harbor across the river Zuari. The Maie Lake, where the hours glide by imperceptibly on cool, clear waters. Mondla Forest and parks close by, the laughter of life echoing in the wild. Dood Sagar, the milky waterfall, captivates the eye and the mind. Kalangud Beach, extending along the Arabian Sea in an inward arch of about seven kilometers. Golden sand all the way. With all its charm, Goa casts a spell on every visitor. No wonder that Abe Faria, the father of hypnotism, was born in Goa. The Coribino, a folk dance of Portugal, preserved by the Goans for its lively rhythm and sense of gay abandon. a long way from days of yore. Bicholim excels in clay articles. The Goan craftsmen still take pride in traditional art and craft. Metalwork is another ancient craft in Goa. Both traditional and contemporary designs are fashioned by devoted craftsmen. The metal sculptures of Goa speak the eternal language of the spirit and are a living monument to the cultural traditions of the country. There is lacquerware too in Goa. The colours used are made from locally manufactured dyes made from indigenous materials. Goan lacquerware is attractive and long-lasting. Wood carving is an important traditional craft in Goa. Exquisite craftsmanship is revealed in images and panels, and of course, in the traditional Goan furniture. Skilled fingers, simple tools, natural materials, a living tradition handed down from father to son, from mother to daughter, and then the touch of creativity. These men and women excel in craft as varied as sculpture and jewellery. The Emporium at Panji the dream of a tourist. Treasures in ivory and tortoise shell, bamboo and wood, brass and terracotta, and many, many more.
Goa is indeed a mine of wealth and prosperity. Iron, manganese, ferromanganese, bauxite, silica, sand, all these make a substantial contribution to the economy of the land through exports. Marmagoa, a fine natural harbour, handles the exports of Goa's mineral ore. It's one of the major ports on India's western coast and has been expanded for direct loading of ore to increase export trade. The waters of the Arabian Sea are generous towards Goa. There's a variety of seafood and plenty of it for export. Agriculture is one of the main occupations in Goa. And in Goa, one relaxes with the incomparable Feni a natural intoxicant rather akin to vodka and yet quite unique. Goan Feni is world famous. Carnival time in Goa. Begun by the Portuguese, it still goes on every year. Everybody joins in the carnival for the Goans are a fun-loving and carefree people who breathe and live music and dance. 